Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 2. Today is episode number 63. If you guys do enjoy the content, then be sure to leave a like as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm at the moment. Feel free to subscribe, drop a follow on Twitch, and hopefully you enjoy the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. All right, so we're going to be taking part in the North American Regional Championship. Uh, for some reason, right, this is open to R3 and R2 vehicles. But you can't actually buy the R2 vehicles unless you're level 47. Now, I don't know about you, but this is really poor game design. The fact that they've locked something behind a higher level. I've completed every event in order. And I still have not unlocked it. So I ha would have to skip this event to get the higher level cars. Which, in my opinion, is really poor game design. And I'm glad that they fixed it for the later Forzas, because they just said, buy whatever you want as long as you got the money. So, you know. Anyways, starting off with Sunset Peninsula, Road Atlanta, Sebring, Maple Valley, and finishing off with Laguna Seca. Let's get going. Alright, here we go. So we are starting in fourth, uh, because we do have a very slow car. Uh, there are obviously the R2 cars. Oh, I forgot this was the car with the eyelashes. £3.50, not £35. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much vaping and shit like that costs, so I don't know. So we're able to just about keep up with the R2 cars. This is on easy difficulty, by the way. There is no way in hell I would be doing this on anything higher. Now that black and orange Corvette, I believe was one of the cover cars for Real Racing 2, if I'm not mistaken. Minimum 350, maximum up to 100. Ah, fair enough. That makes sense. Yeah, so I, I can quite easily race these guys on easy difficulty, but if it was on medium, there'd be no chance with this car. So, uh, this one is just going to have to be done on... Easy, I'm afraid. This car's quite smooth, actually. I really like it. You know, normally, I hate on American cars in these games because they are utter shit to drive. This is not too bad. I like it actually surprisingly controllable which again it's surprising one minute 32 lap times as well so this is going to be about a 12 minute race the fact that we got five events is kind of a piss take on it Honestly, some of these later events are super long. Like, insanely long. Motorsport 3 and 4 are definitely going to be... 4 is going to be horrendous. I think that last championship, the R1 World Championship, for uh, Motorsport 4, is about 4 hours long. Like, that would take pretty much an entire stream to do. Fair enough. Yeah, so... Yeah, vaping and smoking is just not my thing. Never done it. Don't really want to do it. Because I know as soon as you start, like, you'll, you'd end up proper addicted to it. So... That's why I don't like drinking too much alcohol. Like, I'll go on a booze night out every so often, but I don't rely on alcohol. Uh, I don't really rely on anything drug related, to be honest, so just try and stay away from that. Because I've, I've seen firsthand how difficult it can be to get off that, so yeah, it's not my thing. But by all means, like, it's your life, do what you want with it. I, it's just not my thing. 
Yeah. That's far enough. I can see the appeal, definitely. And I can see why people get addicted to it. But, you know. Just not my thing. I'm still in awe at this, how good this car sounds. Like, for a game from 2007, this engine noise is pretty spectacular. This game's 15 years old this year. That's crazy. Hey, no worries. Thank you so much for the luck. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Wow. I still can't believe Forza Motorsport 3 has 220 events. Like, imagine going... Uh, granted, a lot of them are, like, three race events, so they're much smaller than Motorsport 2's events, where some of them are five, six races long. And then, again, with Motorsport 1, where some of them are, like, eight, nine, ten races long for those events. But when you compare that, like 220 different categories compared to 90 for this game and 75 for Motorsport 1, it's insane. It's crazy to think about. Good you. Oh, Jesus Christ, that was horrendous. Dun 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 dun
Not bad. I still don't get why developers are like, oh, do you know what we should do? Make the races really long and make the events really long and have more events. I'm like, this seems quite lazy in this, this game. I know they did it in all of the motorsports, but like, at least for like Motorsport 5 in particular, a lot of the races were only like two or three laps. So, they're much shorter and much more bite-sized to put up with. And I think it's the same with Motorsport 6 and 7. Obviously, there are the endurance races, and I like that they're separate. But, like, some of these, the fact that the races are so long... Like, I prefer a racing game where I can have, like, bite-sized portions of, like, each car. That's much more preferable. A really long race with one type of car, like, doing an entire event... That takes like an hour and a bit to do. No. Too much. I think that's why they changed it. Started to change it for like Motorsport 3 and 4. And then when uh, 5, 6 and 7 came along. They just proper went to like short events. Like I think a majority of the races in Motorsport 5. Are like no more than 6 minutes. I think. Because I was playing, like, I straight up just um, didn't play Motorsport 5 at all. Uh, and when I first played it, obviously, Forza Hub was actually quite an active thing at that time. And uh, I ended up with a crap ton of credits for Motorsport 5 when I first logged in. I had, like, 4 million waiting for me when I first played it. Because um, I never actually played Motorsport 5 on launch day. I went straight to Motorsport 6. Because that's when I got my Xbox One. Um, but yeah. Ah, not bad. We finished. Woohoo! Here we go. Road Atlanta. Not going to be able to talk much and chat much. But that's fine. And you've been here for what? About three hours, which is pretty impressive, actually. So I appreciate it, man. Oh, my God. How are you today, Fallen? <laughs> Sir, ask wipe the second. There you go. Two hours and 52 minutes. So, yeah. Nearly three hours today. That's quite a lot of watch time in one day. <laughs> oh yeah, the the watch time's working. Sometimes the bot just doesn't... Just crashes on launch for me, so... We <laughs> have 454 hours, that's uh, crazy. Do you know, I also forgot that the uptime command existed on my bot. Because I just rely on, like, looking at my screen in the corner. So, yeah, pretty much the whole stream. Minus 20 minutes. Oh, come on, you pleb. You think we can catch up? That's our goal, to catch up. No restart in this one. Yeah, I think it was yesterday's stream that uh, they got you. Oh, no, it was um, Friday when we were supposed to be doing this stream. They got you below 20k. And uh, today you've actually had, I believe, a thousand damage done against you. Because we've had um, four subs, I believe. Just in today. I'm not 100% sure though. Orbit did a sub. Death Ray did a sub. 
Kodo gifted a sub after I had gifted them a sub because I did the free gift sub. So yeah, four subs total in damage. So <laughs> those crazy bastards. Yeah, but remember, you were at 25k HP, so you're now. It's probably going to take another nine months to get the rest of the damage. Let's be honest. So still going to be a while. <laughs> For context, uh, anyone who's watching on YouTube or anyone who's new on Twitch, um, we have a thing called the Simp Boss for Twitch chat. Uh, and basically, um, it's for the person who simps the most in chat. They basically have a set amount of health, uh, and you can do damage to them and become the Simp Boss if you kill the Simp Boss. If you kill the Simp Boss, you become the Simp Boss. Uh, and the only way you can you can do damage by using your channel points or by um, cheering, gifting subs. Uh, you can also do damage if you do uh, super chats on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, and you can become the super uh, the simp boss that way. Um, but that damage is done manually. Uh, but also the simp boss can heal themselves and give themselves more health by, you know, doing the exact same thing. Uh, but Sir Fallen decided to give himself uh, 25,000 health points right about three months ago. And it's taken about three months to do 5,000 health points of damage, which is mental. And more than likely, if we kill him again, he'll find some way to get that health back. <laughs> Even if I could see into your heart, Even if I could see I still remember is this the Dimension Remix? It doesn't say. It just says two mines. Shit. If you did the whole 100k at once, I would shit myself. I mean, I completely... Like... I, I was dumbfounded when you did the 25k. And honestly, it's... It's surprising me when anyone, like, gifts subs, cheers bits, anything like that. It's crazy. But, <laughs> I bet I want to see those skid marks. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Even if I could see into my mind. Even if I try to see, I still never really know if you cared. You didn't hear a word that I said. Uh, no, I don't. Not really a fan of, um,. I'm sort of very much focused on racing games at the moment, so if it's not a racing game, probably won't be playing it. I just prop I'm back into that racing game rut again. Like I When I first had my Xbox, pretty much was only racing games. Then when I got sort of later on into the Xbox life, I started playing shooters. Then I got my PS5, started playing a couple of shooters on there, but properly got into the racing game rut sort of towards the end of me playing on PS5. Then when I got the PC, it was shooting games for like six months. And now I'm properly getting back into the racing games again, so. Currently doing the same circuit. Oh, what? Road, Road Atlanta? Yeah. 
This track's quite nice in uh, Motorsport 2, actually. A lot less of a ball lake than uh, Motorsport 1, that's for sure. It's time so you can race yourself. No, I don't mean like that. What, Paulin? <laughs> what? <laughs> Should I be concerned about what you're about to tell me or not? I've got a circular rug for my VR space. Fair enough. Cool. Could see into your mind. Even if I try to see. I still never really know. But how does ordering a new bed mean that you can properly get into VR? How does that work? Is it like a smaller bed that gives you more space or something? Or like a fold away bed or what? I don't know. I still think, Fallen, you should, on your PC, not get a wheel yet, but look at investing in uh, something like Project Cars. You can find a key on Enaba for, like, five quid. Try that in VR with a controller. See what it's like in VR with racing games. Because, honestly, ev even if you only ever play on controller with VR racing games... Racing games in VR is like the most immersive experience ever. It is so cool. So I can push it against the wall and have more space, but it also means I get to rearrange my room. Ah, fair enough. I quite enjoyed when um, I wanted to do my setup like this. I actually enjoyed rearranging it and actually like properly getting my setup done. Because when I originally had my setup, I sort of was like, well, I don't have enough space to have my PS5 and all that stuff out. Obviously now that I've moved it here, my PS5 can be out, my PC can be out and I've got plenty of space. For two monitors. In fact, I've got enough space for a third monitor if I wanted to. I can move this monitor across a bit, move this monitor to the middle, and get a third monitor on a monitor arm on that side if I wanted. I don't want to, but, you know, it's a possibility. But I never told you found out. I got a crush on you. My heart's been displayed. You found out. I've got a crush on you. I don't think I need more than two monitors, to be honest. I don't see the point in it. I haven't ever needed two monitors when it comes to editing videos, so... A hybrid memory foam bed. What the fuck is that? There's like a petrol-powered and electric-powered memory foam. <laughs> It's a really shit car joke. Okay, leave me be. Not bad. Result. Woohoo! First place. I'll take my money. Thank you very much. Right. Sebring. I don't know why, I'm not a fan of those lights in the front of the car. Because they're not the width of the stripes. So it looks odd. Like, if they were the width of the stripes, then maybe I might like them more. But, yeah, they're not the width of the stripes. So they seem odd. You found out. I got a crush on you.
you can definitely tell though when you compare this to like Motorsport 3 and 4, uh, especially 4, that there's a lot of like motion shake and shit like that. Like there's not a lot of motion in the camera as you get to like higher speeds in this game, but you can definitely tell there's a lot of motion. A Viper would be nice to drive at IRL, but I know Vipers are really rubbish cars. You know. A lot of American cars are just rubbish as, like, cars. They're cool because they've got a lot of power, but for some reason the American formula, whenever anyone makes a, an American car, the Viper maybe is more closer to a supercar than a muscle car, but it's still got so much muscle car heritage that it's got the muscle car formula. When you compare it to, like, a Corvette, a Corvette is more supercar inspired, so it's actually got some form of control. The, the Viper does as well, but any other American car that's high performance is normally just based off of the muscle car formula. They're not great at driving round racetracks. Like, by all means, quarter mile is... I, I mean, Americans do live their life quarter mile at a time. It's quite a common phrase. My money don't jiggle jiggle. It folds. I like to see you wiggle wiggle. For sure. Thank you very much for those uh, biddies, Glitch. Appreciate it. Yeah, so... Like, American cars just... Bleh. Oh, yeah, I'll agree. But the fact that you have to handle that car so dramatically to be able to keep it under control is why it's just not a great car. Like, you compare it to a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, they're much better built. Even though they might have a little less power, but they would go so much faster around corners so you know well you've got to do the little dance don't you talks about jiggle jiggle so you've got to jiggle jiggle my money don't jiggle jiggle <laughs> well yeah like don't get me wrong american cars sound amazing they look amazing but they're not practical at all they never have been even I mean, you look at stuff... Yeah, exactly. So, in, in terms of practicality, and let's be honest, straight line speed, you only win a small amount for straight line. The amount of time that you can lose in a corner compared to on straight line against, like, a Lamborghini or something, it's quite a lot sometimes. Yeah, America... American cars have the looks. I mean, I'll be honest, 90 zero American cars aren't the greatest looking. But 2000 onwards and 90s and earlier, like before the 90s, so 89 and before, pretty solid looking cars. I'll be honest. Um, the only American car that I will not accept is the Hennessy Venom. Because that's fucking British. Like, that's based off of a British design. So. But, like. You know. It's. It's cool. I like the sounds of the engines. But I would much rather go for a Lamborghini or a McLaren or anything other than an American car if I'm even thinking about going around corners. Because around corners, American cars are crap. And the thing is, I can guarantee you, actually, if American car designers... Like, uh, Americans have a very one-sided mentality. Like, without getting political, they're sort of very fond of their heritage. So, when you look at, like, American cars, they're very... All of them follow the same recipe. More power is better. And like... You know. 
To an American, they would see a 600 horsepower Viper is better than a 550 horsepower Lamborghini because it's got more power. But I can guarantee you that 550 horsepower Lamborghini will beat any 1,000 horsepower drive like American car in a race easily because they just have no cornering ability and on the straights mm, maybe the American car might win but from initial acceleration I can guarantee you the lighter Lamborghinis would win until like the halfway mark and then the American car will catch up it's just you know if Americans and American car designers went away from the mentality of more power is better, maybe Americans could actually, and like, started focusing on, you know, handling, making the cars feel better to drive. Maybe American cars could actually be the best cars in the world. I'll be honest. You think you put in a 1,000 horsepower engine an American muscle engine with... I mean, you look at some of the AMG cars at the moment. You think the AMG Black Series, one of the fastest cars around the Nürburgring, has a 700 horsepower V8 in it. You think if the Americans did that, put a 900 horsepower V8 along with, you know, actual good handling, fuck me, that car would be phenomenal. It'd be the best sounding car, it'd be the best looking car. And it'd be a good handling car as well. I don't think it'd be the best, because it would take them some time. But America just won't focus on handling of their cars. This is more power. Like, you look at IndyCar and NASCAR. IndyCar could be the fastest sport in the world, but they just put no development in their aerodynamics. It's just more power. I want more speed. And it's the same with NASCAR. Though NASCAR is fairly straightforward. It is all just pretty much the formula's always been about. Give me more power. There's so much potential. I mean, if you gave NASCAR a front splitter and a rear wing, right, I can guarantee you some of the NASCARs races like on the road courses would go much faster than um like you probably cut 10 seconds a lap time easily because you'd one be able to put the power down and two you'd be able to corner you know Been so long, I've been out of my body with you. Oh, this chair's uncomfortable. Probably gonna have to walk after this one and just stretch me legs a bit. Yeah, I think this um, stream's gonna end at like midnight at this point. Yeah, exactly. Like, by all means, I'd have an older car because they look good. I mostly get, like cars because of their looks. But I also like cars because of their performance. And sure, I'd love to own one muscle car. So that I could have that raw power. But if I was looking to do any form of actual speed. And, like, actual performance. Something else, you know.
Like, again, America could make some of the best cars in the world. Hands down. I think they could be better than British cars, than Italian cars, quite easily. Here's the thing. The C8 is the best car that America makes. Like, the Corvette line, like the C7, the C6, the C5s, they're the best cars. I think the C8 is that hybrid one, isn't it? It's quite a nice looking car. Oh, shit. That's not good. I, I would like to own one. I don't think I'd ever own one, because they'd be expensive as fuck, but I would like to own one. Um... <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Oh my god! I'm not in first. Hey, you get the fuck back here. <laughs> Ram them out the way. If you can't get the position legally, forcefully take it. But, like, the, that car is the best that America has to offer. America doesn't have anything better. That's what's so bad about it. I'm disappointed. Because, let's be honest, power is nothing if you can't use it. There's no point adding power if you can't use the power properly and efficiently. Like, even in a straight line, modern-day muscle cars still wheel spin, which is wasting power. You know. And, I mean, a lot of the modern-day muscle cars, they need special drag tires to be able to use them properly. So, you know. If you were to cut the horsepower down by a tad, but actually put focus in elsewhere, you'd have a fucking killer drag car, and even potentially a killer car around corners. Okay, here we go. Race number four. I can't believe my mind thinks that I'm going to get this done. Wait, four events done today. I'm going to push for it. Thing is, I'm going to be up all night, tomorrow night, or tonight. Actually, do I, do I edit tonight's stuff tonight, or do I just wait till Wednesday and just edit them all, render them all on Thursday, and then upload them all on Friday? Might be better off doing it that way, actually. As long as I don't break these promises And it's still too also wasted on myself By the way, uh, so Tomorrow is Monday It's gonna be more Forza content Forza Motorsport 2 Uh, Tuesday is gonna be WRC 10 Another WRC 10 stream Wednesday is going to be Forza Motorsport 2. Thursday is going to be... Uh, I think I'm going to do Bus Simulator every Thursday. That's about with that a bit. Because I've been properly enjoying that game. Uh, and then I need to find a game to replace Monday, Wednesday and Friday with. Wreckfest. Wreckfest. We'll do that. So next Friday is going to be Wreckfest. And then coming back to next Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Basically, replacing the Falls of Motorsport 2 stuff will be breakfast until we start Motorsport 3. So, it should be fun. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow. Oh, 
feel so wasted all myself. You left me so wild How can I ever deny Not too bad. Looking good. Who's still here in the chat then? Let me know if you are in the chat. Off with your head. Dance, dance, dance till you're dead. Heads will roll. Heads will roll. Heads will roll on the floor. Hey, good day, Cotto. Thank you very much for uh, sticking around today. Oh my god, it's hands! What up, Hans? How are you today? Hopefully you're having a good day. Yeah, surprisingly, we're getting into the fast cars now, which is good. Uh, I would like some faster cars. I can't wait to get into the faster cars. But for now, we have to put up with what we got. Mac concept too. <laughs> You're making mac and cheese. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm going to do a Hammond at the top of this hill. Just crash off. Go over the cliff. Sounds good. Crap. Another rap name, Lil Mech and Cheese. No. 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 <laughs> I do not associate with that rap name. <laughs> Lil Mech and Cheese. It's fucking disgusting. <laughs> I-I don't know why, but any rappers that have, like, Lil in their rap name, just really, like, it's so unoriginal. Any rapper that has Lil in their name. Like, Eminem didn't think of Lil Eminem or Lil Some Shady, you know. It just seems like such a half-ass way of coming up with a rapper name, you know. Like, ah, uh, do you know what? I can't think of a rap name, so I'll just go for the generic Lil something. It's just, uh... I mean, I understand it's a joke, but it's not original. 
that's the problem. There's no originality to, like, the identity or anything like that if you just call yourself Lil. Like every rapper's doing. You know. Is this bad trip? Yeah. Yeah, bad trip. Bad Nero. We've had a really good stream today, by the way. I have been, and it sort of proves my point that I was talking about earlier in the stream. Um, where I mentioned, um, yeah, pretty much. I will agree with that, Fallen. Um, but yeah, this stream's just proved my point. Like, from my conversation earlier where I said I'd much rather a stream where the chat's active but minimal viewers than a lot of viewers but no chat. Like, I had a stream the other day, seven or eight viewers, but they were all lurking. And I had one person in chat and it felt extremely dead. Today, I've probably peaked at about five, maybe six, um, that I've noticed anyways. But I've had multiple different people chatting, conversating, and it's felt like a much less dead stream, you know? It's felt much more enjoyable. And it does have a much better impact when people are chatting in the chat, the Twitch streamer. As opposed to, obviously, YouTube is different. Like, YouTube is driven by numbers, but Twitch is driven on interaction. YouTube, the best way to support is to get watch time. Twitch, best way to support is to just interact. You know? And it definitely proves my point. Big Mac does stay in our heart, though. Or Big Mac. <laughs> Big Mac. It's like a fat joke and a food joke mixed into one. Bonk. There we go. Result. Winner, winner. Chicken sandwich dinner. All right, here we go. Laguna Seca. Let's get going. Yeah, so... Boo, 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 boo. I'm actually going to set up a bot um, that um, when people join the stream for the first time, uh, it will save their name like when they type. Um, and that way I can work out who's in chat so I can easily track who I'm gifting out subs to. I tried not to lie to you. Didn't get me that far. Oh no! No, it sent me in the ditch. Uh, well, we've had four subs today, so that's done a thousand damage. So. Oh, 
Cause we're going nowhere We move in circles I'm not gonna lie, Nero is one of those bands that I absolutely love. They make. They're just brilliant. The wide variety of like different sounds, but they have their own style. It's this sort of like 80s synth wave kind of inspired theme to all their music. The problem is, they don't make any new tracks at the moment. The last album came out in 2015. It is 2022. That was eight years ago. They announced that they had an album in the works this time last year. And they sent out a tweet that had 12 songs and that they were pretty much finished. So, 12 songs, pretty much finished. Still a year later, no sign of an album. It's just strange. I, I'm not going to lie. I think as an artist, especially in modern day, if you're making music and your full-time job is a music artist, you should be capable of releasing an album every three years. At a minimum. Like, three years is a long time before releasing an album. As a professional music artist, you should be able to make music every three years. Like, make an album. Twelve songs. That is a song every three months. That's a long time to make a song and work on a song. Granted, if one song takes four months and another song takes two months, that's fine. But it shouldn't take more than three years to make an album. And like, if, if your job is an artist to make music, you should be releasing albums every three years, as a minimum. If you release one every two years or every year, that's fine. Three and a half years, yeah, okay, fair enough. If it goes over a bit, it, it doesn't have to be specific, but like, you should be able to do that. Yeah, I mean, didn't they have, like, a gap of, like, 15 years or something between albums, right? I mean, it's the same with Pendulum, but Pendulum actually split up and then came back. So that's a little bit different, but Nero's still been making... They've been making remixes of other songs. So they've been able to remix other people's music, but can't, like haven't made their own tracks in ages. Yeah. Like, it's just weird. Like, you can take definitely tell what an art when um, a band takes music seriously is if they actually produce music. Like, it's, it's a weird thing to say, but so many artists just take forever to make their music. I mean, even Ed Sheeran, right, produces an album every three, three to four years. Like... And Ed Sheeran sells out so many, like, stadium tours and all sorts of shit. And he still has the time to make a full album every few years. Like, I don't know. I just think it's laziness at that point. If 
They're not. Ed Sheeran makes some hits. I'll be honest. Bad Habits was pretty good. Bad Habits was a banger. But the thing is... Uh, Ed Sheeran can make some good songs. He's got a really good voice. But when he's a producer of his own music, he's, it's not as good. That's why I really think more artists should work together. Like, the songs that Ed Sheeran has done with other people, like the Take Me Back to London with Stormzy. Fucking banging song. He's made a song recently with a guy called Russ. Never heard of Russ before. But the song absolutely slaps. And Ed Sheeran sings on it. But somebody else has produced the music. And I'm not going to lie, a lot of pop songs... Yeah. The top charts nowadays they're all based off of like radio listening time as well um so if people listen on the radio on like alexa and stuff like that which they can track quite easily they'll class that as listening to a song even if it's just background noise they'll class it as listens which just isn't right Because a lot of the time people just have the radio on as background shit. Especially businesses. When they put the radio on, they have to put something like Radio 1 on. Because if they put their own Spotify on and it starts playing swear words, Jesus Christ, some Karen's going to get pissed off. <laughs> your, your playlist said the, the hell word. You got to stop that. Play some fucking shit like that. <laughs> but like, yeah. I'm pretty sure when, um, I don't know if Vodafone still does the big top 40 on, like, Heart Radio and stuff like that, but when Vodafone did do the big top 40s, that was based solely off of, like, Apple Music, I believe, which Apple Music was, in the UK, is fairly catered towards the older generation. Apple Music is catered towards the older generation. A lot of the younger generation focuses more on Spotify, but they never counted Spotify in that count. So, on the radio, the top 40 was basically based off of what the, what the oldies liked, pretty much. Ready, 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 are you ready? Do you know, I feel it too. Big Smoke's order with extra cheese. Did you send that video? <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> That's funny. That video is brilliant. Like a number nine with extra cheese. A number nine large with extra cheese. Two number 47s with extra cheese. <laughs> Mac and cheese with extra cheese. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Number nine. A number nine large. Two number nines. And a number nine with a soda. And a number nine large. <laughs> Big Smoke's order, but with extra number nines. Oh, do you want to know something interesting that I found out, chat? Um, it's to do with music again. Um, oh, yeah, you should totally do that, Hans. Totally. Good idea. <laughs> Even though it was my idea, do it. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so to do with the music industry, right? So you know how a lot of people produce songs for other people? 
You know, one of Rihanna's top songs, Rude Boy, that... Come here, Rude Boy, boy, yeah, you're getting on. Take it, take it, make it. I, I, I don't know how the lyrics go, but that song was actually produced by Rob Swire from Pendulum. The guy who produced the songs for Pendulum. <laughs> it's pretty crazy to think about that that song... And it, it proves my point that artists need to work together because that song, a top hit for Rihanna, was made... By Pendulum. And especially if you listen and you play the start of um, Rude Boy and compare that to Slam by Pendulum. I'll, I'll show you an example in a minute for anyone watching on Twitch. For anyone watching on YouTube, you'll just have to search it up and trust my word. They sound similar. And it is crazy to think about. Here we go. Result. That's my uh, Forza Motorsport victory song. That's fucking uh, Final Fantasy. <laughs> and that is a... Panos car, I believe. Panos LMP1. Woohoo! So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>